Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, Case 21. This is an amazing case, so let's go ahead and get started. We have a frontal view here of the pelvis, and this young individual is complaining of chronic hip pain, left greater than right. So chronic left and right hip pain. And the question that I have for you guys today is, what finding would you expect to see on this patient's left hip MRI exam based on the imaging findings that you're seeing on the x-ray? Would you expect to see an iliopsoas avulsion, decreased alpha angle, transverse ligament injury, anterior labral tear, or a posterior labral tear? What finding would you expect to see on a patient's left hip MRI examination? And of course, we know that the answer here is going to be an anterior labral tear. This is a nice example of what CAM-type femoral acetabular impingement would look like. If we take a look here closely at the left hip, notice here that at the femoral head and neck junction, there's like a nice bump here or an osseous protuberance at the femoral head and neck junction. That's suggestive of the CAM type of femoral acetabular impingement that we'll talk about in a second. They also have that on the right side as well. There's like a, there's lack of offset. You know, normally you have a nice offset, you know, a concave offset at the femoral head and neck, head and neck junction. But instead we have this osseous protuberance here suggesting CAM type FAI. And we know that these patients get anterior superior labral tears. And we also know that they have a predisposition to being uh, getting early osteoarthritis. And we can also already see in this 20 some year old individual with you know some subchondral sclerosis, and we can also see developing a subchondral cyst along the superior lateral acetabulum. And you know, no 20 year old or 25 year old should have stigmata of osteoarthritis unless they have some sort of predisposing condition like FAI or you know trauma, like a fracture there that has then subsequently developed post-traumatic osteoarthritis. So this is a nice example of what uh, FAI would look like. So femoral acetabulum impingement is, of course, a morphological abnormality of the femur or the acetabulum that can lead to impingement of bone, cartilage, labrum, when you have range of motion. So, you know, depending on if you're abducting, internally rotating, or externally rotating your hip, you can get this type of impingement. There's two types of FAI that we're going to talk about briefly, the cam type and the pincer type of FAI. Now, the cam type, which is what we're seeing here, is when you have osseous prominence at the femoral head neck junction, right? We have the lack of offset here that results in impingement along the anterior superior acetabulum. And this of course is gonna predispose to having labral tearing, particularly along the anterior superior labrum, anterior chondral defects and cartilage thinning, and something called an increased alpha angle that we measure on a axial oblique image on an MRI, uh, which you know is proof that there's osseous protuberance at the femoral head and neck junction or lack of offset at the femoral head and neck junction. And, and typically if that angle measures more than 55 degrees, that's suggestive of CAM type of FAI. This is usually treated conservatively with, you know, anti-inflammatory medications, you know, bed rest temporarily, but ultimately if it gets bad enough, they have to do a femoroplasty to smoothen out that femoral head and neck junction. The most important thing to understand about this is that this leads to early osteoarthritis. And this is devastating because if a 20 year old or a 25 year old has osteoarthritis that can often result in pain and you know, major issues with, uh, with function uh, for the patient. So it can be a devastating consequence for the patient. The other type is known as the pincer type of FAI or femoral acetabular impingement. And this is when you have over coverage of the acetabulum and that leads to impingement on the femoral neck. So you know, we, on an AP radiograph of the pelvis or the hip, you can measure this center edge opening angle which is normally 25 to 40 degrees, but if it's more than 40 degrees, that means that there's over coverage of the acetabulum that leads to pincer type of FAI. The opposite problem, which is under coverage of the acetabulum happens in developmental dysplasia of the hip, which we see in the pediatric population. So this is associated with some things like acetabular retroversion, coxa profunda when the, on a frontal radiograph, the you know, medial acetabular rim you know, extends more medially than the ilioischial line and then acetabular protrusion or protrusio acetabuli when the medial aspect of the femoral head extends medial to the ilioischial line. So when you have these findings that can be associated, not diagnostic, but associated with, you know, the pincer type of FAI. And this usually leads to more extensive labral tear. So not just confined to the anterior superior quadrant, but, you know, more extensive, the labral tears and the pincer FAI tend to be a little bit more extent, extensive than the uh, CAM type of FAI. So this is also treated conservatively often, but it can be also, if it gets bad enough, it can be treated with a periacetabular osteotomy. And of course, this can be devastating as well. It can lead to early OA. I think that's the most important thing to remember about these cases. And this is not just exclusive. Some patients can have, you know, elements of both CAM and pincer FAI, but sometimes we see, 
you know, only camp type and only pinch rafael. But again, I think the most important thing to remember is that this can lead to early OA, which can be devastating for the patient. Thank you so much for your attention. We'll have another super high yield case next week. Uh, please take a look and please follow and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.